So here we have here Roberto Alcantar and Trin Lee. They join us in our studios this morning to talk about what their passions are about. So first, let's start out with Roberto. And I know you're not speaking on behalf of State Senator Marty Block, but we That's are correct. talking about what moves you, what drives you, and what is that? So my passion has been, you know, working in my community. And the issues that I've specifically been working on have been human trafficking and feeding the hungry. Now, my previous work experience has taken me, you know, to places where I've worked on those fields. So I've dealt with the issues primarily with domestic trafficking, mm -hmm. which is something that a lot of people are not aware of, you know, that goes on in our communities. And the other is hunger. And I really am passionate about these issues because I see how our communities are currently being affected by these issues. And these are issues that, you know, they're not Republican, they're not Democrat, there are community mm -hmm. issues that we need to work on together. Okay, and Trin, let's talk about you. You mm -hmm. uh, work for the Center on Policy Initiatives, yes. and you deal with community solutions. So let's talk about, for example, as we showed, um, neighborhood solutions on the fact that some residents, they want lights in their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They don't have sidewalks, something that we all take for granted in many other areas, right? Right, right. So neighborhoods are facing a lot of infrastructure issues, right? Mm -hmm. um, infrastructure is falling apart all over San Diego, and that affects the quality of life for San Diegans. Um, for example, street lights, right? People don't realize that San Diegos who use public transit um, have to walk home in the dark because there's no street lights mm -hmm. from their bus stop to their home, right? Kids are afraid to play in their neighborhoods and so they end up playing at school because there's no other time for them to do it. Um, families can't walk on the street, can't walk to their relative's house, to a park, to a library, or to the store because they're afraid in their own mm -hmm. neighborhoods. And so we really need, it's about quality of life and it's about being able to um, thrive in your own neighborhood. Okay, so those are the, some of the problems that you deal with, some of your passions you're interested in solving. So, Roberto, let's go back to you. You're talking about human trafficking. The fact is, is that there has been not enough done on it, but there have been some strides, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. How they've been accomplished. So they've been accomplished by having community members come together with law enforcement and lawmakers to really focus on these issues. And if you look at, you know, the recent passage um, of the human trafficking proposition, you know, that passed with widespread support from both Republicans, Democrats, and independents, because these are issues that, you know, don't affect a certain group of people, affect everyone in our community. And like Trin, you know, like Trin just mentioned, you know, we're looking at the community issues that she's working on, those affect these other issues. So, you know, mm -hmm. if you have streets mm -hmm. that are well lit, you know, where there's lots of public safety, you're not going to have right. these places where it's, you know, easy for human trafficking to occur. A lot of this is domestic, so we need to look at those issues. Um, and also the hunger issue, you know, it, we have in our right. county one in five people face food insecurity. Okay, and really quickly, Trin, civic engagement, that's mm -hmm. part of the solution, isn't it? It is, it is. We need services that work for the residents, and so mm -hmm. um, that includes resident involvement in the process, right? I work with the Community Budget Alliance. Right. Um, we do budget presentations all over standing to make sure that mm -hmm. folks understand um, how the budgeting process works, but community education is not enough. Um, there needs to be public uh, budget hearings um, in neighborhoods in mm -hmm. each district so that there's more public um, input in the process and then there should also we should also think about bringing participatory budgeting to San Diego. Okay so let me look to both of you and pose this question how do we move past the stalemate that we're looking at do we have to change the culture Trin you? Um, I think we need to look to our leaders and um, our leaders especially our elected officials need mm -hmm. to put their differences aside and really um, think about the greater good. Okay, and Roberto, what, how about the, you, the two of you? I mean, you're the new leaders of the future. What can we do now? What's the thinking of the future of the new leaders looking forward? Well, it's, you know, having these tough conversations and being mm -hmm. able to, you know, for me to go to Trin and ask what's going on in the community and for Trin to be able to come to me and feel that she's going to be listened to. And one thing that always fascinated me about NLC is where else can you get somebody that works in politics, a community organizer, someone in real estate, mm -hmm. and someone who works, you know, for, for business and an entrepreneur together talking about these issues. And this is something very unique, and I think we're very fortunate uh, to have this in San Diego. Which is what you learned at San Diego Leadership Alliance, right? Mm -hmm. All of you coming together of That's differences. That's correct. All mm -hmm. right. Okay, Trin Lee, Roberto Alcantar, you know what? These names, these leaders, you're going to be see them and hearing about them in the future. Gene, back over to you.